Welcome to Life Today Live. I'm Randy Robinson, and we've got a very interesting topic and in, uh, interview cli uh, clips today. Uh, we're going to talk kind of about shame. Have you ever done something as a Christian uh, that you you thought, I, I, you know, how do I how did I do that? <laughs> you know, um, and and that can sometimes, or maybe it's something you did before you became a Christian, and you just haven't been able to kind of live that down, you know? Um, shame is a very, very powerful thing. Um, a lot of times we we carry it because we know that we did something wrong. Uh, we feel like we deserve it. Um, it, it can be crippling. Uh, it, it can be devastating in our lives. And I think the enemy uses it to keep us from being who God has recreated us to be. You know, we are a new creation in Christ. That should mean that the old things have passed away and all things have become new. And then, you know, when you do things as a Christian uh, that are from the old ways, it just it can create this conflict within us that says, you know, I'm, I'm just not good enough. I'm, I'm a failure. Um, and it can leave you defeated, and it can do a lot of long-lasting damage. So, <laughs> what would be the worst thing you can do uh, as a Christian? Um, I, I'm not going to go, you know, create a top ten list or anything. But I would imagine that most of us would agree that, I don't know, being a porn star might be one of those things that um, would potentially, you know, give, provide a, a good reason for a lot of shame in your life. Well, we're gonna we're gonna hear from a porn star, former porn star, I should say. So, let me introduce you to Richard and Brittany De La Mora. Uh, Brittany was in the porn industry for many years quite well known I'm told um, and it's an interesting thing and so I'm going to let you hear a lot from her her story and then <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about that and hopefully um, my, my goal here is to give you a good example of a bad example in a sense right um, just to communicate that our mistakes can't really outweigh what Jesus did on the cross for us, uh, even though it can feel that way. So here's Brittany and Richard de la Mora. You know, I feel like our story is really like the modern day Gomer and Hosea, where God <laughs> calls this prophet, this man of God to go after this woman who is just this prostitute and selling herself just to show his great love for humanity. And mm. that's what he's done in our life. Um, growing up in my household, I didn't know who God was. Mm. Um, he wasn't encouraged nor discouraged. We just simply didn't know him. And because God is love, there was very much a lack of love in our household. And, you know, unfortunately, I would hear things from my mother, like, I hate you, and I wish I never had you. And, you know, she spoke these things over my life. And eventually, I became a product of those words that she spoke over me. And I became this young woman who just felt so rejected and unloved that I started searching for love in all the wrong places. And I thought, you know, I want to be so far away from home. And, and when given the opportunity, um, I moved to college and I started dancing so that I could, you know, afford living on my own. Um, and from there, there were a couple producers that came in and said, you know, you're beautiful and you are destined to be a star. We love you. You know, we make romance movies. If you're ever interested, give us a call. Oh, wow. Um, I knew that they weren't talking about romance yeah, movies. Not Hallmark movies. Right. Yeah, I knew what they were talking about, but where I was in my life, I was 18 years old. Um, mm. And I just felt like, you know, they were feeding me these words that I didn't hear at home. They yeah. were affirming me. And so I thought that I found my place of belonging and I was already promiscuous and taking my clothes off for money. So I decided to take it one step further. And inside, you know, I think subconsciously we always try to hurt the ones that we love, 
not because they loved us well, but because they hurt us. And so there was this rebel inside of me that just wanted to shame, you know, those, those whom I loved. And mm. I got into the adult film industry. I was there for seven years. At about my three and a half year mark, I had, you know, been a full blown heroin addict and I was just, you know, on everything cocaine. And um, I called my grandma one day and I just said, Grandma, like, I feel like I am going to kill myself if I don't get help. And so she came and she picked me up from Los Angeles and moved me into her house in San Diego. And I announced that I was quitting the porn industry. That was my intention. Mm -hmm. And my grandpa had been going to church. So I said, could I go with you? And mm -hmm. he takes me to church and I encounter the presence of God that day. And I received Jesus as Come my on. Lord and Savior. I was given a Bible. I just start to devour the book of Genesis when I get <laughs> home. And uh, Satan was not happy about my decision, obviously. And so he sent, he knew my weakness because the enemy always knows your weakness. And he sent a man into my life because men were my weakness. Mm -hmm. and and this man, you know, was a backslidden Christian and he started won me over through kind of taking me to church and, and so forth. And I got baptized. And then he said, it's time, you know, you're going to be a bigger star than ever before. This man was a pimp and oh. I ended up getting back into the adult film industry for another three and a half years. But something was different wow. because this time I had the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You see, Jesus will always be right there with you when, whenever you're in a pit or whatever dark place you play place yourself in, in life. And he never stopped speaking to me. So when I would pray and I would read the Bible, I would just hear God's voice. And mm. there was a day that God said, Brittany, you need to leave him. Mm. And I said, okay, well, what do I do? You know, I'm, I'm kind of stuck. And, and I had this idea. I know it was God. I went and stole his phone, my pimp's phone. I ran outside and I said, I don't know what to do. And I'm all alone. And the Holy Spirit said, call your mom said, I can't call her. You know, we don't have a good relationship. And he said, Brittany, humble yourself mm. and call your mom. I was battling with a lot of pride because I didn't want to admit that I had made a mistake. Mm. I always say that pride will keep you stuck in a season of life that you don't even want to be in mm. because you're too afraid to admit that you need help. And that's where I was. But in that moment, I, I just said, I'm going to be obedient to you, God. Mm -hmm. And so I called my mom and she picked me up within 20 minutes. Wow. And she took me back to her house and uh, there was, a, you know, I still had to film porn. This was all I knew at this time. And I was, I asked my mom, mom, can you take me to the airport? I have to go make some money, you know, and um, the Holy Spirit said, bring your Bible. So I grabbed my Bible. <laughs> yeah, it gets good. Uh, <laughs> I'm on the airplane on my way to film what I did not know would be my very last scene because um, Revelation was the only book in the New Testament that I'd never read. So I start reading chapter one. I get to chapter two, verse 20 through 23 and mm. it says, I have this thing against you. You tolerate that woman named Jezebel. Mm -hmm. She leads my people into sexual immorality. I've given her time to repent. And if she doesn't repent, I'll cast her and her children into a sick bed. And in that moment, the fear of the Lord came upon me and I just started crying. And I said, God, I'm so sorry. Like, I had no idea that this is what I've been doing. And, and I feel so bad. And, and then the Holy Spirit brings so much grace. He says, Brittany, this is not the life that I have for you. And because mm. it's not the life that I have for you, I promise you that the life I have for you is going to overflow with joy. It's going to overflow with peace. He said, if you'll quit the industry today, I'll bless your life like no man ever could. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that day. That's when you know it's God. Oh, for it sure. Wasn't, it wasn't condemnation. It was no. conviction yes. and grace. And exactly. Grace. Yeah. It was the two combined. And so I went to set that day and said, this is my last scene. You know, <laughs> just want you all to know that Jesus has a better life for us. <laughs> this is not the life that we're supposed to live. He has a great life for us. And so I quit the industry that day and I started going to church um, I was invited to a young adult ministry and there was a man preaching and he said, you know, I just have a word right now for the women. I want you to know that you are a woman of God, that you are worthy of real true love and that you are worth the wait. Mm -hmm. If your man isn't treating you as a woman of God, he needs to step up or step out, show him the exit sign because you're worthy of real true love and you're worth the wait. Was it him? <laughs> yeah, you caught on yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. 
So um, at that time, prior to going to church, I actually had started dating yet another guy. And so when I heard that message, I broke up with that guy yeah. because I said, you know what? He doesn't want to wait for me. And I'm a woman of God. I'm worthy mm -hmm. of real true love. Oh. I'm worth the wait. And um, I decided that I was going to take a year off of dating so I could just get to know Jesus and fall in love with mm -hmm. him. I also did the purity ceremony at my church. I said, my way hasn't been working. No more <laughs> sex till marriage. I'm going to try things God's, God's way. And over that year, I fall so madly in love with Jesus. And I also fall in love with this handsome honey right here. Mm -hmm. And about eight months after my year was up from my vow, my commitment that I had made to God, I honored that. Um, eight months later, we started dating. And mm -hmm. now we've been married for almost three years. Yes. We have a baby on the way. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Have you ever been in the middle of an interview and thought, wait, what? <laughs> what? What? Do you got saved and went back into the porn industry for three and a half years? Well, I have. <laughs> so I, I, I had to ask the question because that's a tough one. Uh, and her, her husband, Richard, even said, yeah, that, that, that's a tough question. By the way, chat is open. Hello, Wanda. Uh, so if you have any comments or questions, feel free to chime in because literally I'm sitting there and you heard me say, okay, yeah, that the Holy Spirit brought conviction, not condemnation, which is consistent. Um, and, and then the, the grace, but I'm thinking three and a half years is a long time. And I understand immature Christians, new Christians uh, can, you know, make mistakes, but my gosh, back in the porn industry for three and a half years, that's a tough one. So I had to ask her about it. And this is her answer. When we read throughout the New Testament, you know, Jesus even says that it, it's the sick that need a doctor, right? And when we look at his ministry, oftentimes he's out there spending time with sinners for what purpose? To bring them into his kingdom, to yeah. win souls and to make disciples. And that's what Jesus did. Whoa. How do we win souls and make disciples with people that are already healed, redeemed, and set free? No, we have to go after the sinners. Sure. And that's what Jesus does. He did that when he was walking the earth, and he does that now through the power of his Holy Spirit. Yeah. And right. so his spirit was with me in my sin. But guess what? He didn't leave me there. Yeah, yeah. He pulled me out of my sin. He Come continued on. to speak yes. to me. He was, continuing, con he was continuously there for me. Come and on. then when there was that moment of opportunity, he said, Brittany, it is time. Time to leave. He Time knew. He see what he was doing over the three years that I was with the pimp is he was building my trust, mm -hmm. so that when he would speak, I would listen, and then I would see things happen, and I go, oh, mm -hmm. when I listen to the voice of the Spirit good things come because the Bible teaches us that there's blessing behind obedience, right? So every time I was obedient to his voice, uh -huh. I got blessed. Uh -huh. And so it took a three year process where the uh -huh. Holy Spirit was there with me in my filthy, dirty sin. He uh -huh. was right there with me, uh -huh. building my trust to the point where I would be obedient and I, my life would be radically changed because of his patience and his grace with me. Okay. If you are a Christian, you're a believer, but you're trapped in sin you know she said god was with her in her sin she didn't mean that in the sense that god was on her side no he was working every day to walk her out of it that's some hope because if you are stuck in sin and you are a believer god is walking you out of it okay god does not tolerate sin in our lives he doesn't want it. it it's a cancer but man sometimes the the spiritual chemotherapy can take a while i think that's the case with her i i, I do think that's the case with her uh and and that's hard because christians can be you know really judgmental yes we judge the fruit in people's lives absolutely but i know a lot of believers are, are really quick to say well you're not a christian and that kind of condemnation, I don't think, helps. Uh, I think it's fair to say, you know, you need to examine some things in your life because, you know, if you're stuck in the sin, that's not where God designed you to be. That's not where he wants you to be. But he's patient. He is very patient. Uh, and, he, and he works on us day after day after day. 
So I think when you look at the trajectory of where she was and where she is now, you can see how God was at work, and that's hard. Um, you know, we expect the instant, you know, almost like instant perfection, even though we know as Christians we still commit what we think of as small sins. But, you know, all sin falls short of the glory of God, all of it. Uh, some of it is obviously, you know, only comes out through prayer and fasting because they're deep-rooted, and I think it was the case with her. I mean, it was, this is a deep-rooted thing. It took some time to, to get out of. So, yeah, um, Robert, woman at the well, repent and sin no more. We don't know her story. Uh, we know what Jesus said to her, um, but we don't know how long it took her to get out of it. Um, Bunkle's Garage, nice handle. It says, we're all on our own paths in our journey. One should not judge one another. Um because we're, we, you know, we're not without sin ourselves. That, that's true. That's true. And it can be hard. I think it really takes, um, it really takes God's spirit to love someone out of, out of sin. You know, it takes grace to get into the sinner's world. It takes truth to get them out of that sin. And we can be impatient, you know, um, but God has a purpose in he will work it if we will let him. And she let him. It just took it took a long time, uh, in in my opinion. But, you know, I think sometimes our, our timetable and God's time, timetable aren't necessarily the same. But look at where she is now. Now, here's an interesting thing. I want you to hear her husband's side of the story because I think it tells a lot. This is her husband, Richard. By the way, if you're catching this late, that was Brittany De La Mora former porn actress for a long time, <laughs> seven years, uh, three and a half of which she says she was a Christian and talks about the Holy Spirit building trust in her and, and, and speaking truth to her, all of which sounds right to me, you know. Um, but then this is her husband, Richard. I didn't even know she was in the adult film industry. Sure, how would you? I know right. this is funny, but the way that I found out was I – brought my cousin to church and my cousin actually saw her and he goes I think I know who she is <laughs> and I'm like wait what do you mean he goes oh, I have a confession to make and I said what's what's that cousin he goes um I used to watch her adult videos <laughs> and I was like oh okay and um I said yeah she goes, I think it's so and so and soon soon enough that was she was yeah that was her and um that's how I found out that she was actually in the adult film industry so random right mm -hmm. but even me meeting Brittany that was never just a thought that came into my mind you know when I first met her I actually met her at Starbucks at a coffee shop and the day that she gave her life to the Lord again and dropped that guy she said hey I want to thank you and I'm like why he goes she goes you know my friends and I were calling you Mr. Ditch and I said Mr. Ditch he goes yeah <laughs> have you ever seen that movie called Mr. Hitch by Will Smith yeah. and I said yeah where he hooks people up he yeah. goes yeah well, you're the pastor that breaks people. Breaks people. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so, felt so I felt literally, I felt so bad. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry to me. Like, she's mm -hmm. so funny. She's like, no, he, he wasn't good for my life anyway. I didn't need him. <laughs> but uh, it was so funny the way that we met. But from there, you know, we always just had um, a great friendship. And I, we, I honored her by her taking that one year off. Mm -hmm. I was also seeing somebody at that time as well. So I didn't have my eyes on her. But what I loved about Brittany is that you know, Brittany was always a servant in the house. You would see this girl in the hallway, she would just light up like mm -hmm. a light bulb for Jesus. Mm -hmm. I would see her right when I walk in, she'd be greeting the people. She'd be loving on people. She would be doing outreaches with us. We have a ministry called Voice. And she would be there helping us, praying it's for the homeless. homeless. Uh, it was a homeless ministry, praying for the homeless, mm -hmm. serving. But what I've always honored about this woman is her heart. Mm -hmm. She is a servant and she has a heart of gold. And when her one year was up, I noticed that about her. And um, obviously, I broke up with my girlfriend. And that time, I it started had to, to yeah, nothing to do with me. Nothing right. to do that with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> you didn't even okay. know I liked him. I started, you know, to, to you know, to fall for her, and we started to talk as friends. And but, you know, one of the hardest questions that popped in my mind was like, how am I going to introduce her to my parents? Yeah. You know, my mother and father, obviously, they're Christ followers, and. 
you know, it was tough, you know, to go to my parents, you know, I like this girl, she's an ex-porn star, you know, it's yeah, not, right. it's not a regular yeah. conversation somebody would, would have, but. Um, that well, could bring a lot, a lot of baggage into of, a Of course, of yeah. course. Absolutely. And a lot of questions, sure. which happen um, in our dating process, a lot of questions, but, you know, God is so good and faithful, and, and I pray, like, God, I need your help in this, mm -hmm. in this situation. Well, um, long story short, um, Brittany was actually sharing her testimony on a Sunday. My parents were there out of all weekends. We're there that weekend. Because My, they live out of town. Because they live out of town oh, okay. um, in Santa Barbara, and we live in San Diego. When they heard her, the, her message, my mother just fell in love with her. Mm. She looked at me, she goes, Richard, did you see that woman? I said, yes, that's a good friend of mine. You know? <laughs> and she goes, I love this girl. And I said, mom, why do you love her? And she said, you know, Richard, she is a woman who has been broken by God. And I said, mom, why do you like her? Because, she, because she's been broken by God. And she said, because she's no longer dependent on herself, mm. but she's dependent on him. Mm. She was telling me, Richard, brokenness isn't a liability. Brokenness is an asset. Mm. And this woman has been tried. She has been tested through the fire. And look at her life. She is gold. Yeah. And when I heard that, oh, my goodness, I was rejoicing and praising <laughs> because yeah, sure. the next conversation I would have with my parents that her and I were talking to each other. Mm. And from there, the rest is history. Um, we got married on February 20th. And it's just been a blessing ever since. And she's my best friend. I love her. And I'm just so grateful for her. What year was that? Um, 2016. All right. I love that Richard didn't even know when he saw her. He didn't know about her, her past in, in the porn industry. He didn't know about her addictions. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. It wasn't because he was stupid okay it was because god had changed her completely changed her when you know she walks on this in our offices and on this set she i looked at her and thought really this is because i knew we had a former porn star coming and when i met her i thought wait that's you because she just radiates with a purity that can only come from god when richard looked at her he didn't see her sin because God had brought her out of that. He saw Jesus. That's the hope that I want to convey to you. Wherever you're at, whatever sin has bound you in the past or even dogged you to this day, Jesus can bring you out, completely out, and put a radiance on you that other people will look at and not see your past. Okay? They will only see Jesus. That is great hope. Now, if you were with us when we talked about kingdom, God's kingdom on earth, you, you, you know that, that our part in, in getting into God's kingdom plan requires us to, to get right before God, right? Our righteousness is not our own. It's only in Christ. That means to abide in him and him in us. Right? Let him work in us. Let him work that sin out of us. Then seek to benefit others, which you heard Richard talk about her helping with the homeless. And then watch God as he benefits us. A lot of times we get that out of order. Okay, What did Brittany have to do uh, in order to deal with that issue that she says she had, which was, which was men? She was looking for something from men that continuously got her in trouble because she was looking to the wrong man the wrong men she needed to only look to the son of man right to jesus listen to what she says about what she did that really set her in a in a right way and got her out of that old habit that was continuously dragging her back into sin it's so important because before falling in love with Jesus, I couldn't love myself. I didn't know how to love myself mm -hmm. because you can't see yourself the way that God sees you unless you're in love with him and you have his heart for humanity. You develop his heart for yourself and you start mm -hmm. to see yourself through mm -hmm. his eyes. And so before falling in love with Jesus, I settled in mm -hmm. every relationship. I look at some of the guys I dated and 
you know, I got to give, you know, give myself grace, but it's like, what were you thinking? You know what I mean? And obviously like I pray for them and and I want to see all of my exes on fire for Jesus, Mm -hmm. of course. But I was at a place in life where I didn't know my value Mm -hmm. and I didn't know my worth. And Mm -hmm. so I settled for men who could never recognize my value and worth because I didn't see it in myself. But after you know, falling in love with Jesus and he showed me my value and worth even after everything I had ever done, every sin I committed and everything I did, God still showed me that I was so valuable and that I was so worthy. Well, I refused after that to settle for a man who couldn't love me the way that Christ loved me. And that's the problem with so many people when they go into relationships, they don't, they don't see themselves the way God sees them. So they wonder why they have, you know, failing relationships or why they have a partner that mistreats them and abuses them and it's it's you will attract what you subconsciously deserve or think you deserve and so once I understood what I deserve I was able to attract a a far greater man he's he's everything to me (laughs) okay interesting she took time off she she took uh, she quit dating just so she could get in a right relationship with God now, we want to f- make a formula out of this a lot of times. They will stay away from men, not all men, but just in the sense of a dating relationship, so that I can have that relationship with you for a while. And that told her who she was in Christ, and that set her up to meet a godly man who would, who would treat her right and encourage her in her walk with Christ. You also, like I've just said before that clip, Richard was talking about how she was helping others. See, she was stepping into that kingdom role, getting right with God, seeking to help others. God turned around and blessed her with a husband, with a baby. I'm guessing she's had the baby by now because that interview was a little while ago. And that is the the blessing that God wants to bring in our lives. All of us. All of us. That means you. That means you. The freedom from the past. Uh, getting rid of those strongholds of sin, okay? You, you just you have to press into Jesus every day, and it may take a while, okay? God's patient. Be patient. Talk to someone who's godly who can help you, not someone that you're codependent with in an unhealthy way that can be disastrous. We depend solely on God, but we do have community. Community is important in walking us out. She was involved in her church the whole time, so this is that path to break those bonds of, of sin and of shame. You don't see any shame on this girl. You know why? Because God doesn't shame her. God doesn't condemn her. He, just like the woman at the well that uh, someone in chat, Robert, referred to, he, he was telling her, look, you need to not do this. This is sin. This is sin. But he wasn't condemning her in the process. He was instructing her for her benefit. That's the love of God in our lives. What can God do with that? Okay, do we simply just bury the past and move on? I mean, some things, yes. But oftentimes you'll find that God will take all those bad things and work them together for something good when we're called according to his purpose, right? scripture you've probably heard before. Listen to this, because this is the encouragement that I want you to hear. God's heart is that we walk in victory. Mm -hmm. God's heart is that we walk a shame-free life. That's the whole point of Jesus dying on the cross. And when I started going to church, I was very shameful. Mm -hmm. When it was my first time ever stepping foot and just, it it was an incredible church. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, everybody here is so perfect. You know, the lies that Satan feeds you and nobody will ever accept me here. Mm -hmm. And I got asked to share my testimony through uh, triplexchurch.com. They're incredible organization and ministry that helps free people from, you know, the chains of addiction that have played a huge role in my life. So when they asked me that, I go, Oh no, (laughs) I had this conversation with the Holy spirit. And I just said, you know, everybody, I I did the interview and I said, everybody's going to know what I did. I'm, I don't know what to do. God, like, how am I going to act? What if people at my church find out because this interview went viral and the Holy spirit said, Brittany, can you picture Jesus on the cross? And I said, yes. And he said, can you picture every beating that he took for you? And I said, yes, I can see that. And he said, was that enough for you? Mm -hmm. And I said, 
yeah, that was more than enough. And the Holy Spirit said, then why are you ashamed of the very thing that Jesus died for you for? Mm -hmm. He said, be set free. Share your story without shame. There's no condemnation in Christ. And, you know, when I started to be open about my story, we learned that we overcome the evil one by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. Uh And so when we share our testimony, not only do we overcome the evil one in our life, but we overcome the evil one in so many other people's lives Mm -hmm. because we set them free through the power of our testimony. And so if you just take that bold step of faith and just say, you know what? I'm not ashamed of what I've done. It's in the past. Jesus died for me. I'm just going to share my story. You'll encounter so much freedom as you see others get set free as well. So listen to you. Why does this get you excited? It gets me excited because that's the grace of God. That's the grace of God working in her life. And I think it's a beautiful thing. I think oftentimes, you know, when we do make mistakes, that's the one thing that we're ashamed of. Mm -hmm. Like God can't use me. God can't forgive me. But that's a lie. And my Mm -hmm. wife is the epitome of that, of God really working in and through her life. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, I didn't even... I didn't even know this woman was a, an adult um, film star. Because you saw her restored. I saw right? her restored yeah. in just the way that she shines and the anointing that mm-hmm. is on her life. This is what the grace of God looks like. And I truly believe that when people encounter the grace of God, that God will renew them. The Bible teaches us that when we receive the Lord in our lives, we become a new creation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is what my wife looks like, a new creation. And yeah. I rejoice over that because that's God. As a new creation, you are designed to be free from shame, okay? You are also designed to be free from any strongholds that that remain, that may linger. Uh, And yeah, you share your story to set others free. If you haven't gotten there, that's where the enemy is battling you right now. Now, I'm going to say something in response to chat. Um... I, heard, I went and heard Mark Driscoll speak last night. He was here local, and he preached one of the most powerful sermons I've heard, and I've heard a lot of sermons. Uh, if you're having difficulty trusting and reaching out to others, it is no doubt because you've been hurt in the past. I want you to understand something, and this is not this is a little off topic, but I think it's helpful. Um, we are living under a new covenant, okay? There was the old covenant with the Israelites, the new covenant with those who are in Christ. That covenant relationship um, dictates, in a sense, uh, the the rules for our life, okay? Um, It also provides the benefits, you know. um, It provides the blessings. It's the framework under which we uh, interface with God. We are in a new we are in a covenant relationship with God. There is a counterfeit to that covenant. That counterfeit is it's demonic. It's from it's from the enemy. That's what he does. He counterfeits. He doesn't create. God creates, the enemy counterfeits. God creates a covenant. What does the enemy create? He creates what are called inner vows. We take these vows oftentimes out of pain. And I suspect if you're having difficulty with community and reaching out to others, um, it's because you've been hurt and you made an inner vow that I will never do that again because I got hurt. That is a counterfeit to the covenant that says I can forgive that I won't listen to the words of others that are not true. I will only listen to what God says about me. And that is the trap that shame can put us in, as well as hurts from the past, because in order to operate the way God has designed us as a new creation to operate, we have to find our identity in what he says about us, who he says we are. And we have to break those inner vows that say, I promise to myself that I will never put myself in a position to get hurt again. I won't reach out to others. I won't trust others. I won't share my story because 
the criticism for this girl, off the charts. There will probably be comments on this video after it, it hangs out there and people watch it in replay. You know, well, she obviously wasn't a Christian. Well, she, ah, well, how could she? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. You cannot listen to the critics. You got to listen to what God says. What God says about you, who you are, what he wants you to do, because that's where the freedom is. If you've made that inner vow, just, just examine yourself. Say, have I made that vow to protect me from getting hurt again? And is it, is it hampering me in my ability to be a part of a community, to share my testimony, to get rid of the shame, or to drop that sin that's just dogging me for years? Go back to the covenant. You need to go back to the covenant because God will tell you who you are, and he will tell you how to be free from those things. Free from the sin, free from the shame, free from that inner vow where you're trying to protect yourself when God is your protector. All right. Uh, thank you for being in chat. If, you, if, if this was of value to you, you think it would be of value to others, please do share it. Uh, the replays are hanging on these places, YouTube, Facebook, uh, the Periscope, which is tied to Twitter and then my personal Twitch account. Um, but if you think this will help somebody, please, please do share it. Um, give it, if you, if you do the like thing, that doesn't just make me feel good. It pushes it up in the social media world. So that's always good too. <clears throat> Excuse me. But just know who you are in Christ. Whatever you're dealing with, he'll walk you out of it. You stay close to him every day. You won't have to live in shame, and you will have that testimony you can share with others to help set them free. Again, I hope this has encouraged you today. I thank you for being here every day, Monday through Friday, in the noon hour, which is 1600 UTC. If you can figure that out, we're central time here. Where so. are you going to spend eternity? Join us again next time. Where are you Appreciate going you to being spend here. Eternity? Life Today Live. Jesus Christ says there's only one way to heaven, I